That's not a bad prophecy. He said we had both of them on the same frequency. So that's not bad, is it? All right. Uh, what do we? Be. Yeah. Thirty-two years. Been married thirty-two years. Next month. Yes. Next month. I'm Amen. Glad of that. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Father. What do we do? What's the ministry? Going throughout the world, uh, just demonstrating the power of God. Uh, we pastor a church. Pastor a church. Is What's right. the name of the church? First Baptist Church in Bullard. First Baptist Church, Bullard, Texas. It's a Southern Baptist church. We've been there how long? Uh, 20 years next February. Next February will be 20 years. You know, uh, do we have services like that, like this here? Yes, yes all the time. All the time. <laughs> That's uh, why we can feel so at home. Yeah. Uh, isn't that kind of weird that a church, a Southern Baptist church, would be having services like that? Yeah, we do it. But God's just doing some wonderful things. He's doing Joel 2.28. Yeah. It cost a big price, can I tell you. It, it did not come easy, and uh, it cost us everything. But it's well worth it. Have you enjoyed Seattle? It's a beautiful city. It really is. We've never been here before. Well, we've been to the airport. Had, yeah. yeah. Quite a bit. That's how we got here. Uh, we've been flying in and out here a lot, going to different places. And I started praying over Seattle. And start praying over something, you start getting reception from the Lord about it. And so the Lord, so he told me he'd send me here and uh, talk about some stuff. Uh, what did we do this afternoon? We went downtown, mm -hmm. went sightseeing. They had a little fish market down there, didn't they? Yes, that was fun. That was fun, wasn't it? And uh, what else did we do? Uh, we, had, we ate at a Chinese Mm -hmm. That was great. That was fun. <laughs> Pretty good sized Chinese place, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. I enjoyed it. <laughs> what, what do you think is going to happen here? I just pray that maybe uh, you're here for the first time this week and you may feel like maybe you've left out, but I pray that God will just catch those up, that maybe this is your first time, that he'll catch you up uh, just like you've been here all week, that you'll just not feel like you've been deprived of anything. And I know sometimes it's a, a real struggle to try to get to the places we really want to, to be at, and sometimes we just can't go to everything that we truly want to. And sometimes it, um, you know, I know that you just feel like, well, maybe I missed out on something. But uh, anyway, if that applies to any of you, we'll just listen up and uh, ask the Lord to really touch you and catch you up with what's gone on throughout the week here, and to refresh all of us and renew us, and uh, just help us to ha have those Holy Ghost earthquakes. And I'll go home and tell my daddy all about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, good. God bless you. It's good to have Carolyn with us. We travel all over the earth, literally. And uh, good to have her with us. We're having the time of our life. We've uh, been preaching for 20-something years and really enjoying it. God's really doing some wonderful things. Uh, I'm excited about what he's going to do here in this room tonight. He wants to display his power. And I want you to take your Bible... How many of you have a Bible? That just scares hell out of the devil. Go ahead and just lift it up. That really, you know, see, that's your sword. You know, you understand that? Taking the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Lift it up and just shake it at the devil. And say to him, Ha ha, devil! I believe this word. This word is true. This word tells me I have power. This word tells me you're defeated. I believe this word in Jesus' name. That's right. That's right. Let me tell you something about God. God's not a politician seeking to be elected. He don't lie. You understand that? He's not trying to get elected. I want you to know that. He's not going to give us some of that rhetoric. When God says something, guess what? He does it. Now, there's two things I want to see accomplished here uh, in the Bible teaching time. I want to talk to you about a demonstration of God's power, and then I want to talk to you just a little bit. I really feel like God wants to speak on two subjects, demonstrating His power, and then also positioning ourselves where we can respond to the prophetic. There's no doubt in my mind that we are a prophetic generation. We're, we're a prophetic people living in a prophetic prophetic period of time according to the Bible and so we'll talk about that but first of all I want to talk to you about a demonstration of God's power it is high time that the church begin to operate under the anointing and the unction of the Holy Ghost to have signs and wonders and miracles that is the will of God God wants us to go back to the principle of the first 
When they first begin to preach the gospel, when Jesus preached the gospel, he preached the gospel with mighty signs and wonders. When Paul the apostle preached the gospel, he preached the gospel with mighty signs and wonders. And we're going to have to have those mighty signs and wonders in the church today if we're going to see the name and the fame of the Lord Jesus spread abroad. So I want you to know, get ready for signs and wonders. Get ready for signs and wonders. You know, every church believes in signs and wonders. They've got a sign out front, and it's a wonder anybody ever shows up. You know, uh, but uh, that's not the kind of sign and wonders we want. We want supernatural, Holy Ghost wrought, Christ honoring signs and wonders. And so it's time for a demonstration. The Bible says, here I'm in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, starting with verse 1. Paul the Apostle is writing. He says, And I, brethren, when I came unto you, came not unto you with excellency of speech, for I determined, are you with me now? You've got those Bibles. Where are we at? 1 Corinthians 2, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 1. Paul the Apostle is speaking. Look what he says. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech, or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Verse 3 says, And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. Verse 4. This is a very, very important verse. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit's power, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. See, here's the key. We've got to have signs and wonders demonstrating the Spirit's power so that people's faith would not stand in the wisdom of men but in the power of God. And look what he said. My speech and my preaching was not with the enticing words of man's wisdom. Now, it would be a great day if we could really say verse 2 and 3 was very, very real today. For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. We need to get back to the basics. We need to get back to the preaching of the cross. Let me tell you, the preaching of the cross really demonstrates the power of God. The preaching of the cross is to those that perish foolishness, but unto us which believe. It's the power of God. It really is something to preach about the cross. And he says in my speech, verse 4, my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom. Did you know most of the church really want preachers to preach with enticing words of man's wisdom? They want to come and sit under preachers who preach enticing words using men's wisdom. But that will not cut the mustard with God. That is not God's plan. God says we're to preach the gospel, certainly. But we're to demonstrate the Spirit's power. Do you believe Paul could have preached with enticing words? Paul was educated, seated at the feet of Gamaliel. You remember that? Of a, a Pharisee of Pharisees, a tribe of Benjamin touching the law, blameless. You remember that? He was a pedigreed religious person, but you know, he said, all of that I count but dung that I might really know Christ and, and be captured for what I'm caught for. And so it's really something here. We want to talk about demonstration. This is one of the only times in the New Testament you find that word demonstrate. And you know what it means? It means to show off the power of God. It literally means to put on display, put on exhibition the power of God. Do you believe it's showdown time? Yeah. It's showdown time. The, the Satanist and the New Age and all those people, they're talking about power and they're talking about this. Listen, it's time the church starts talking about power and put our money where our mouth is. You understand that? It is showdown time, folks. We really need to display the power of God. But if we're going to display the power of God, we better have it, hadn't we? One reason we don't talk very much about the power of God, we're afraid somebody's going to ask us to let them see it. Is that correct? We don't talk about it because we're afraid somebody's going to put us on the spot and say, hey, you believe in the power of God? Show it. Well, let me tell you, God loves to be put in an arena where He can manifest Himself. He wants us to do that. So I want to talk to you a little bit about manifesting the supernatural demonstration of God's power. It's God's method of telling who Jesus is. Take your Bible and turn to Acts 2, Acts 2, 22, where it talks about God testified about who Jesus was. He gave accreditation to Jesus by mighty signs and wonders and miracles. Uh, let's read that, Acts 2, 22. It's, it's a nice verse, and it talks about some um, important things. I'll give you a moment to look at it. Acts 2, 
22. Look. Look what Peter says. And you men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him in the midst of you as you yourselves also are aware. Do you see how that God approved of Jesus? And the Greek word approved means attested to, gave accreditation to Jesus. How? By mighty signs and wonders. I want to show you how Paul preached the gospel. Turn with me over there to uh, uh, Romans. Paul preaches the gospel with mighty signs and wonders. And so uh, if he did it that way, you and I need to do it that way. We need to preach the word of God with mighty signs and wonders. I'm reading now out of Romans chapter 15, verse 19. Paul the apostle talking about how he preached the gospel. I guess God must have trusted him pretty well to do it because he planted most of the New Testament churches. And so uh, I think that's a principle of the first, don't you? You know, I know a lot of people think they're smarter than Paul. Well, you know, I don't need that kind of stuff. I'm an intellectual person. Well, you'll never be intellectual enough to reach God. You can't reach God with the mind. The natural mind receives not the things of the Spirit. The things of the Spirit to the natural mind is foolish. They can't be comprehended. Look what the Bible says. Verse 19. Through mighty signs and wonders by the power of God's Spirit, so that from Jerusalem and around about unto Iconium, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. How did you do it, Paul? With mighty signs and wonders. Remember what Jesus said, Mark 16, 20? Go preach. These signs will follow them that believe in my name. They'll cast out devils. Isn't that a wonderful verse? In my name, they'll speak with new tongues. In my name, they'll lay hands on the sick. And then it says, they went everywhere and preached. In verse 16, chapter 16, Mark, verse 20, said, and they preached the word and God did something. He confirmed the word with signs following. I like that. Hebrews chapter 2. Let's turn to Hebrews chapter 2 just a moment. Hebrews chapter 2. You know, it doesn't hurt to know the Bible. You understand that? We need to know all we can about the scriptures because uh, we really understand more about the Lord Jesus. But Hebrews 2, 4 says, well, let's start with verse 3 then. And let's start with verse 1. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1. Wherefore, we ought to give the most earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them drift away or slip away. For if the words spoken by the angels were steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense or reward, how, much, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord, and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him? God also bearing them witness. How? What's the next word? Say it again. Both with signs and wonders and diverse miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to His own will. It's God's method of testifying to the fact that you're telling the truth about His Son. He gives signs and wonders and miracles. Now, I'm tired of preachers standing up in pulpits and telling churches the day of miracles is over. That's a doctrine of devils. You just need to get that deep down in your heart. The Bible says, does the Bible teach that Jesus Christ ever did miracles? Does the Bible say in Hebrews 13, 8, Jesus Christ is what? The same what? Yesterday, today, and forever. So I'm not going to give an argument for miracles. If you don't believe in miracles, you're really missing out on uh, much of what God wants to do in your life. And I want you to really believe in miracles. One of the ways that people begin to believe in miracles is they start seeing them. They start seeing them. And so you remember what Jesus said? Now let me tell you, there's a little catchy statement over in John 11:40. John 11:40. John 11:40. Jesus says to a group of people who are looking at an impo impossible situation, Jesus said, "If you will believe, you'll see." Now I want you to understand something. There is a principle. If you want to see miracles, you have to believe in order to see them. Seeing just won't make you believe. You remember the story in John eleven forty, Lazarus had died. I like how Jesus just kind of postponed his little trip to Bethany until Lazarus croaked, till Lazarus died. You remember the story, and the disciples. Jesus said, "Now let's go into uh, Bethany. Lazarus is asleep." And the disciples were a little dumb and dull and th thick-headed. They said, "Duh! If he's sleeping, he's doing good." You know, and they didn't even know that he was dead. You remember the story, everybody? You remember the story? 
Jesus starts into town and here's old Martha. You remember Martha? She's a good, you know, she's a good example of a lot of religious spirited people. She thought she could touch the heart of the master by being busy for him. Remember her? Remember the time when he came into her house to eat? And she run in the kitchen, she started throwing everything in the microwave and she was in a tither and she was just ha having a real big problem with all this preparation for Jesus. And her sister named Mary was what? Seated at the feet of Jesus. And Martha comes to the door and she is P.O.'d, man. She's ticked off. She says to Jesus, I can just hear, can't you hear? Get her off her butt, get her in here. There's potatoes to peel. She can open a can of peas, you know. She's just mad, man. Now, it looks like what she wants to do would be a great thing, minister to Jesus. But Jesus says about the deal, he says, Martha, Martha, now anytime Jesus says something twice, guess what? You better, better pay attention to it. It talks about double emphasis. He wasn't stuttering, it wasn't a male tillis or porky pig anointing on Jesus when he said, oh, Martha, Martha. He, he's trying to slap us into reality. Listen to what I'm saying. Martha, Martha, you're clumbered about by much serving, but Mary has chosen that one thing which is most needful, the thing that won't be taken away from her. She was receiving a prophetic input about what was going to happen to the life of the Lord Jesus. That one good thing that will never be taken away from her. And now, you believe the religious spirit in the church will try to get people real busy? Oh, just doing something for the Lord? Acts 13 says they ministered to the Lord. You need to learn to minister to the Lord before you try to minister for the Lord. Until you learn how to minister to the Lord, you have nothing to minister for the Lord. Believe that? This means yes. Unless you're an Indian. They have, you know, have you been there? They have one symbol and it means yes and no. But really, they, they don't. See, in Texas, this means no. In Texas, this means yes. And in India, you ask them a question that you should answer yes or no, and they go, it, you know, have you seen those little, they, they just wiggle their head in the cutest little way, and so you have to discern whether it's yes or no, you know. Does this chicken have curry in it? You say, that's a definite yes, you know, if you're over there. Well, now, what's not so definite is whether it's chicken or not. You know, that's the, that's the problem. But uh, Okay, so we're, we're back in uh, John 11 now. We've done the Martha deal. Remember that? So here's Martha again. Her brother, Lazarus, has died. Jesus is coming into town because he knows Lazarus is dead and he's wanting to display the power of God. Martha runs out. She hears that Jesus is coming. She can't stay hooked. She leaves the house, runs out to Jesus, and here she is again. If you'd have just got here on time, you could have done something then, but now it's too late. How many times does an evil spirit try to get you to line up with that kind of theology? Well, this situation's too far gone. Jesus could have helped, but now it's beyond his ability to help. Remember that? But what has always tickled me is how impetuous Martha was. Mary, it says, sat still in the house. John, John 11. But anyway, finally, Jesus comes to where the ha Martha and Mary's house is, and Lazarus is dead, and they carry Jesus to the tomb. You remember that? The burial place for Lazarus? Now, this is a neat, neat deal. A bunch of the people come because there's going to be a showdown. There's going to be a showdown with the living Lord Jesus and a dead believer. And so Jesus says to the people, roll away the stone. And again we hear this negative input. Uh, uh, no, no, not, not now. He's been dead four days and by now he's putrefied. He stinketh. Isn't that a strange term? There's a few terms in the Bible that tickle me. That's one of them. By now he stinketh. And another is where Rebecca lighted off of her camel when she saw her husband-to-be. Remember that? And she lighted off of her camel. That's always been a funny thing to me. They don't, this story, that story don't go with this one, but it's pretty good. Anyway, you can hear the opposition to a display to the power of God. No, no, don't roll away the stone. By now he's decaying. Saying between the lines, if you'd have been here when he was dead, ten minutes maybe, one day maybe, Two days, three days, but now, even though you're God, it's too late. And you know what Jesus said? Roll away the stone. Do you believe there's some stones the church is going to have to roll away if we're going to see a demonstration of God's power? I would suggest the stone of unbelief. It says about it, Jesus could do not very many miracles there because of their unbelief. Save so his lay his hands on a few people. 
You believe, now let me tell you something about unbelief. Unbelief is not benign. It's deadly. It's a thief and a robber, a pickpocket. It'll steal everything out of your spiritual purse. Unbelief will. It has a cousin with it, doubt. You need to read some of the candidates of people going to hell. Unbelief, those unbelieving and fearful are up around the top. Before the whoremongers and the murderers. So I want to tell you something about this unbelief. You better deal with it. It's not a good deal. Roll away the stone. We need to roll away the stone of unbelief. Next thing I believe we need to roll away the stone if we're going to see a miraculous demonstration of God's power is the traditions of men. Oh, I've been in churches. See, we get to do this all over in different things. And people say, oh, well, you know, our denomination just doesn't believe like that. Now, I want to tell you something. This Bible is not a denominational Bible. This is not a charismatic Bible. It's not a Pentecostal Bible. It's not a Baptist Bible or Methodist Bible or Lutheran Bible or a Catholic Bible. You understand that? Now, what would give us the right to disbelieve the Word of God? My denomination just doesn't teach it that way. Well, I've got a big earth-shaking news for you. Your denomination teaches it wrong. If your denomination teaches no more miracles, all of that has passed away, guess what? They're in error. You say, oh, don't stir up. Uh, listen, it's high time to stir up. D did Peter say, I write this epistle unto you, brethren, to stir up? We got too many people asleep in Zion. We want a great awakening, and everybody's too, too scared to sound the alarm. Is that right? Somebody's going to have to sound the alarm and say there's a counterfeit Christ in the house, a Christ of our own imagination. Well, I don't want to get off that kind of deal, but... That's really the truth. Stir it up, baby. Come on, punch him out. Ding, ding, come out swinging. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Ha! You know, that's not now cool. Can I tell you about that happened to me one time? I was in a coliseum ministering, and this guy comes forward, and boy, all of a sudden an anointing gets on me, and I'm jump kicking as high as this guy's head. I knew it was anointing. Man, without the anointing, I couldn't lift this fat leg my, high as my belt. And I was spinning around, kicking at his jaw, and he goes, Wow. Come to find out he was a heavyweight, full contact karate champion. And that display won him to Christ right there. Later on he said, you scared me, man. You know, I thought to God, God, look, you could have got my, you could have got him, he could have kicked my nose off, man. You know? But it's just displays like that that God uses. And so he's been in several of the meetings. I, li I like how God does weird stuff, don't you? I was off in Turlock. Any of y'all ever heard of Turlock, California? It's somewhere off down the farming section, I guess. And we were off down there in Turlock, and first night I was preaching in that church, and I was walking down here in the front, and a, big old, a guy sitting there had a mustache, and he was standing there, and the Lord said, I want you to body slam this guy. I said, well, God, I'm trying to preach. Everybody's sitting out there, and the Lord said, I said, jerk him up and body slam him. I said, now, wait a minute, God. What's the deal? Now, see, God doesn't tell you what the deal is. You understand that? That's one reason we don't get to see much of what God's doing. We want signed contract. You won't humiliate me. You won't, you know, listen, no. No, listen, I'll guarantee if you're going to move in the prophetic, you'll move in humiliation. Well, anyway, I walked by this guy and the Lord said, I said, grab him. So I, finally I grabbed this guy up and I threw him down. Body slam him. Y'all know the terminology. I'm good. Boy, I threw him down. And on the way down, the Lord said, I want you to jump up now and say, Thus saith the Lord unto thee, as Jacob wrestled with the angel of the Lord, so have you wrestled. Church goes nuts. Church goes absolutely ballistic because just a few months earlier, another prophet had been in the building preaching. Guess what he did? He walked by to this guy, jerked him up, threw him down, said, Thus saith the Lord unto thee. Now, don't you like that? Pretty neat. Well, anyway, we got to roll away that stone of tradition. It can spoil you. It can keep you from entering into the prizes and the great things God has for you. Now, let me tell you another thing. We've got to move away from thinking we know how to do it. We've got to move away from that. One thing about how Jesus did when he healed, he healed in diverse different types of ways so that we couldn't put some kind of a, a guideline for it. He 
spit in a blind guy's eye. Hot boy, boom. Spit and touch the guy's tongues. Listen. Now, you can't find a course 101 eye spitting, you know. But I'm telling you, we're going to have to obey God. We're going to have to do things the way God wants us to do them. And so I'm, I know it's pretty humiliating, but it really does work. I like the time when this leper came to Jesus and said, If you will, you can make me clean. Can't you hear the religious law-minded people? No, he's not allowed to touch him. And Jesus said, I will, be thou clean, reach out and touch him. Isn't that neat? See, Jesus doesn't mind breaking pharisaical laws, man-made traditional laws that keep people from coming to know him. Boy, it's amazing. Well, anyway, let's roll away some stones. They rolled away some stones. They rolled, all of that, they rolled away that big stone. And I can see Jesus now. He's standing at the front of that grave, that cave where Lazarus has been buried for four days. Now, think about this. They didn't have air conditioning then. They did have a type of embalming. It was, it was almost like mummifying. They, they'd rubbed these uh, spices on his body and they had wrapped him up in kind of like cheesecloth. <laughs> That's really how they'd done old Laz. He's stone dead, man. Now, it's kind of muggy in the bottom of that cave. And, you know, uh, the, I'm sure the natural processes of decay had already started because they were fearful of it. You remember that? You remember that? By now, he stinks. So can't you see him? He just coming to part at the seams. And so he's in the back end of that old damp, dark cave, and Jesus is there, and everybody's watching. How's this showdown going to come out? And Jesus says, Father, now the reason I'm praying publicly, Father, is not because I'm having a problem believing that you hear me, but I'm praying publicly to demonstrate to these people that you hear me. And then he says with all confidence, Lazarus, come out of there. Now I wonder why he had to call him by name. If he did not call him by name, every, every believer that had died would have come forth. I'm telling you. That happened when Jesus was crucified. You remember that? There was an earth shake. And you know, that's some, I like when the little bit of God's glory bubbles out and it just knocks the socks off unbelievers. Don't you like that? You remember in the Garden of Gethsemane? You remember in the Garden of Gethsemane where we jump? Well, let's get Lazarus out and then we'll go to the Garden of Gethsemane. He's hollered, Lazarus, come out! And everybody's, can't you, can't you, if, if they were uh, giving a commentary of this, the sports announcer would say, well, he's, played the final trump card people are waiting breathlessly to see if there's any power in this man called Jesus and then all of a sudden you can hear the commentator say wait a minute folks wait a minute folks there's a sound and it's coming out of this cave what is that thud thump 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 you know who it is it's Laz coming to life it's Laz coming to the light and he's coming hopping out of there can't you hear the commentators? Oh, my God! I can hear him. And then Jesus quietly says to the people, loose him and let him go. I want to say to you, the church is about to have to loose a lot of dead people wound up with religious bondage and turn them loose. Because Jesus is saying, let them go! Okay, well, I'm screaming because I'm excited. And plus, I just like to scream, you know, just... To, that's what the Bible said. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Show my people their sins. Peter lifted up his voice. I'm tired of these little, well, we don't want to be offensive, brother. You better study the Bible. Jesus said, sell something and get a sword. See, we got this little marshmallow Jesus. Uh, you're about to see Jesus come as a man of war. You're about to see that happen. Well. Where were we going to go? Oh, where, where was we going when I said, let's go back to last? Oh, Gethsemane, when a little bit of his glory burped out. You remember Jesus in Gethsemane? And he's praying and his sweat is like great drops of blood. And you remember that? Here comes the Roman soldiers. I mean, listen, it wasn't four or five of them. It was probably several hundred of them. They had swords and spears and torches and staves and sticks and they come marching into the Garden of Gethsemane. Can't you see them? I, I can hear their chains rattling. I can hear all of this. That's kind of overkill to come arrest a carpenter, isn't it? Don't you think? 
But you know what happened? They come marching into the Garden of Gethsemane and they say, Jesus says, uh, who are you looking for? And they say in an arrogant voice, we're looking for Jesus. And Jesus says, what? I am he. And when that little bit of I am burped out, they went, whoom! And every one of them fell to the ground as though they were dead. These are not charismatics. These are not somebody to Rodney Howard Brown. These were unbelieving Roman soldiers with torches and shields and spears in their hands coming to arrest Jesus. And when he identified himself as God, you remember the same thing God said to Moses, I am? That little bit of who Jesus really is burped out there in the Garden of Gethsemane. I am wham! You know what? If I'd have been those Roman soldiers, it looked like that would have been a good place to change allegiance. <laughs> Jumped up and said, hey, buddy, I'm on his side. But I'll show you the height of humanism. They get up and incarcerate him. Even after being knocked down by a revelatory glimpse of the glory of God. Isn't that something? Now, they could have never arrested him if he had not been willing. You all understand that, don't you? I mean, listen, no way could they have done that. We're going to find out that everything that's happening is happening because he wills it. After all, you know, it's not a showdown to see whether Jesus has more power than Satan. That's, that never was an issue. You understand that? That never was an issue. We've got to get that real, real deep down in our heart, you know. Satan can't even lock up his own kingdom. Isn't that right? You remember the story in Revelations? Jesus said in Revelations 1.18, Behold, I'm he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I'm alive forevermore, and I have the keys. See, the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death and the fear of death. That was those keys. And so, well, that's pretty neat. I want you to know something about seeing the power of God. If you're going to see the power of God, Jesus said, John 11.40, you've got to believe to see it. A lot of people said, let me see it and then I'll believe. Well, you'll never go. You understand that? That's getting the cart before the horse. You have to believe in order to see it. You need to be like Thomas. You remember Thomas of old? Well, after Jesus had resurrected and Thomas wasn't there? A lot of people with unbelief don't show up where they ought to be because they didn't believe God was going to visit there. Remember that story, Thomas the doubter? And they were all, you were, were the early disciples full of faith? They were full of fear. They were in that upper room. They had the doors closed and they were afraid. I can just hear, oh, what a mess we've got ourselves into. Jesus appears. He just walked through the wall. Don't you like that? If you'll start noticing every time Jesus addresses his believers, after that, the first statement's out of his mouth is fear not. You know, I can understand that, can't you? You're in there and you're, you've got, you're just hyperventilated because you think I'm next, I'm next, oh... I'm here, I'm here because I think the Jews are going to come get me and they're going to put me to the... And all of a sudden, choom, Jesus is there. Just step through the wall. It says in the scriptures, and the door was shut. I, I like this. You can't lock him out. But anyway, Thomas wasn't there and later on they said, oh, we've seen him. And Thomas said, hey man, you bunch of fanatics, I ain't believing it. And Jesus made an encore appearance. Remember the story? And what did he say to Thomas? Hey, wuss, come here. Now, don't faint on me, he said. Put your finger right here. Look at these holes. And guess what happened? Kaboom! What did he say? My Lord and my God. I love how Jesus has a way of proving himself to the skeptics. Oh, I was a skeptic. We went, any of you ever heard of James Robinson? He's, this is kind of a different camp. But anyway, James Robinson, one time... He was inviting John Wimber down to his conferences. This was when James was just uh, beginning to move in the gifts of, of the flowing and the anointing of the Spirit of God. And so my wife and I, being good Baptists, we used to go to James' conferences. And so we're sitting out there in one of those conferences James was having in Dallas with John Wimber and Jim Hilton and several guys. And that's when they first started praying for people and someone falling over. So I punched my wife and I said, that ain't God. She said, it's not. I said, no, it's not. She said, where are you going? I said, I'm going up there to tell James. I get up in front of several uh, thousand people, walk up there to James, and I said, that ain't God. If it's God, do it to me. James got, James got old Jim Hilton, some of them got me over there and prayed for me. Nothing happened. I stiffened my old stubborn neck, and I said, see there, I told you it wasn't God. It was God. I was just stupid. If I'd have been God, I'd have slapped me neck and sent me home. 
but God knew my heart, you know. I never did know much, but I was always vocal, you know. And see, now, nearly everything I've mocked, I've had to do. Listen, listen. I quit mocking, man. I used to mock Oral Roberts. You know, and you, listen. And now we spend hours after endless hours, multiplied hours in healing lines, laying hands on people. See, I used to mock that. Pat Robinson, television. Uh, I mocked him one time because I saw him give a word of knowledge on television. I punched my wife and I said, does he think I'm so stupid that I don't know he's pre-taping that and he's expecting me to buy in that this is a word of knowledge? So guess what happened to me? When we started our television program, this was live. This, this was a, we were down at an NBC station, not TBN, NBC, fixing to do a program. And we're sitting, you know how those little old things are, and we're sitting on these little, that little old set there, and we're trying to see five, four, three, two, one, and all of a sudden when he said, boom, and the cameras opened, the spirit opened. And I see a woman sitting in a, on a couch with a yellow polka dot duster on. And here I am trying to preach on... on you know, and I said, uh, 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 and, and God said, what about old Pat now? And, and, yeah, and so I said, lady, I see you. You're there in that yellow polka dot duster, and God's healing you of this. And guess what? He was. And now we do television. We have to tape them sometimes two to three weeks in advance. And guess what ha has happened hundreds of times? We'll be doing a program, and the power of God will come, and God will show us individuals. And guess what? See, God is so sovereign. Psalms 139, where shall I flee from thy presence? We can't get anywhere without it. He's always watching wherever we're at. And you know what? He's so sovereign. He knows that if we're doing a program one night, three weeks later there's going to be that guy sitting in front of the television at a bar or wherever it was at watching the program. We've had time after time after time of, of God proving that to be true. Well, I like that. One time I was in Houston doing live television down there in Houston on Channel 22, and they counted down 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and this program goes to several million people according to Arbitron, and all of a sudden the cameras open, shoom, and instantly I go into the Spirit and I see a Mexican gang member. He's sitting there with a bandana tied crossways across his head. He has a certain kind of earring in his ear, and so I'm prophesying. I said, I see you there. You're sitting there, and I begin to describe the bandana. And I said, and I see that earring you got. And the Lord said, yes, and remind him of that secret tattoo he's got under his collar. And this was a live television. And guess what happened? In a moment, the phone started blinking in the studio. Ding, ding, ding. Guess who it was? It was a Spanish gang member from Houston, Texas saying, can I come talk to you? I said, be here at the studio in a little bit. Got out of there, and there he was. And we led him to Jesus Christ, a, a Spanish gang member. So I interview him. I interviewed him. I said, tell me about it. How was that? He said, man, I went, he said, man, I went over to my grandmother's house and said, I was just kind of sitting there and my grandmother had the TV up and she was uh, flipping through the channels and said, all of a sudden, here's a fat guy pointing his finger at me, telling me all about me. And see, now that's the way the prophetic works. And on the, in the same studio one time, I'm there trying to preach and all of a sudden I go into a vision and I see a pastor. I see this. I see his desk, I see the, the uh, thing sitting on his desk, I see a picture behind him on the wall, I see a bouquet of flowers over here, I see the suit that he has and the shirt that he has and a certain design running down the button line of his shirt. And I described him to a T and I said, if you will respond, God is going to set you free from bondage you've been in for years. And in a moment, beep, 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 guess what it was? It was the phone line. Guess who was on the other end of the phone? That preacher, he said, can I come by and get you? I said, yes, you can. And a little bit he came by and carried me to the study. And there was a television by which he was sitting there watching the program. And God set him free. And he's been free ever since. That's how the prophetic works. I like that, don't you? The prophetic. I want to say a couple of things about it. We are a prophetic people according to Joel 2.28. In, 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 in the last days, God's going to pour out of his spirit upon all flesh. Peter was preaching about that in Acts 2, 16 and 17. When the people said, what is this? You remember the Holy Spirit fell in Acts 2? And there was a great uh, shaking going on there in uh, Jerusalem. And remember people were saying, what is this? What meaneth this? And Peter stood up and said, this is that which was prophesied by Joel. And then he said in verse 16, 
in the last days your son and God will put out of his spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy so in that portion of scripture in Acts 2 16 and 17 we find out we're a prophetic people operating in a prophetic period now let me tell you what a prophet is not everybody running around saying they're a prophet is I want to tell you one thing that happened a few years ago when God began to try to bring forward a prophetic ministry. Many people who had a critical spirit tried to pass themselves off as prophetic. And all they had was just a mean-spirited spirit. You all understand that? A critical self. And so that's not it. Matter of fact, if anybody claims to be prophesying to you under a prophetic spirit, under a, a gift of prophecy, it better do what 1 Corinthians 14 verse 1 and 2 says. It better edify, confidence, strengthen. You understand that? That's what he says. That's what will happen if, that's hap if somebody's prophesying under a real gift of prophecy. But anyway, uh, to boil it down, the Bible says in 1 Samuel 9, 9, that before prophets were called prophets, they were called seers, S-E-E-R, seers. So a prophet that's really operating in the office of a prophet, in that ascension gift, that fivefold ministry gift mentioned there in Ephesians 4 if he's operating in that office of prophet he has to be a seer and he has to be a sayer he has to be a receiver and a reciter you understand this he has to see what God is saying and what God is showing and he has to be willing to say what God is saying by what he's being shown Habakkuk 2 says I will set up on my watch and I will see what he will say you see, Habakkuk the prophet said, I will go to my tower, set on my watch, and I will watch to see what he will say. And it says that a, before a prophet was called a prophet, he was called a seer. We must have that person operating in an office of a prophet who can see what God is showing. God is showing a lot by what he's doing. The heavens declare his handiwork. The heavens night and day, they're uttering forth the knowledge of God. Psalms 19 talks about. But... What is a prophet? A prophet is one in whom God will share his secrets with. I like this. Deuteronomy 29, 29. Deuteronomy what? 29, 29. Deuteronomy 29, 29. Here's what it says. It says, the secret things belong unto God, but the things that are revealed belong unto us. So God, in that portion of Scripture, we learn a couple of things. Number one, God has some secrets. Now that ticks a lot of people off. But let me tell you, God can have secrets if He wants to have secrets because He's God. I've, I've talked to theologians that thought that would actually say, well, you can't tell me anything I don't know about God. I said, well, you're real stupid. Because God, you can't know all there is to know about God. That's going to be one of the blessings of heaven is every, every moment in heaven is going to be a deeper understanding of the revelation of who God is. I used to think we'd all get to heaven, we'd sit on a cloud, and we'd be like something, you know, strumming a chord for... And then I thought, boring. And then God opened my eyes to some of the things in heaven. Heaven's going to be a blast, man. There's created things up there that's going to curl our hair, man. Listen, there's multi-winged creatures, there are multi-faced creatures that are going to fly by hollering, glory to God, and we're going to go, golly, whoa! Did you see that, you know? Really? We think, oh, well, you know, I'm so religious, I just know it. No, listen, listen. It's going to be something, man. Isn't that something? Oh, we'll get there and we'll know as we're known. Oh, listen. We don't know spit about God. I'm telling you, if we knew more about God, we'd be more afraid of Him. That's the truth, man. Fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the most holy is understanding. We, we don't know much about God or we'd fear Him more. Well, no, I want a loving God. Well, God would love for you to be holy. I'm, can I tell you it's a fearful thing to fall in the hands of a living God? If you've got a dead and you can act however you want to, but if you've got a living God, you better watch out. Really? It's a, it's, it, this thing is going to get scary. We're going to move real quick now to Acts 5. You remember Acts 5 deal? I know I see a lot of people saying, Shapa Kaka, I want to be a book of Acts church. Yeah, yeah, I want to be a book of Acts Shambaha. And then you say, well, Acts 5 is there. Ananias and Sapphira playing about their devotion to God. Right in church, and what happened? Isn't that something? Now, why did, why did they get snuffed? They got snuffed because they were 
lying about their devotion to God. Hey, I got news for you. If God starts doing that, the best job to be in is undertaking. Is that right? I think so. Well, anyway, I don't know where we're at. We're just going to... I want to talk to you a little bit more about the prophetic. God has secrets. Deuteronomy 29, 29. He shares his secrets with his servants, the prophets. The book of Amos says, Surely the Lord God will do nothing but reveal his secrets to his servants, the prophets. Now, aren't you glad that God reveals what he's going to do? Now, somehow God pushed us off into this prophetic stuff. Now, uh, I, I'm not saying that we're a prophet. I believe that's one thing that's happened. I believe we've devaluated our spiritual currency by using the words too loosely. I, you know, I really believe that. But I do want to say that somehow the Lord has used us in uh, documentable prophetic utterances where things happen that cannot be gainsaid. I'll share one of them with you real quick. Uh, how many of you ever heard of Paul Cain? Paul Cain really is, a, uh, uh, I, I believe in my, my mind, he's uh, a great prophet. I believe he's a, a biblical statue prophet. Well, anyway, uh, I'd met a man one time named Newman Payton. Newman Payton was some kind of a li liaison or whatever you call it, one of these foreign country diplomatic guys or whatever. And so I'm sitting at Bullard one time, and I'm just sitting before the Lord where we pastor. And I said, Lord, if you want to speak to me, please speak to me. And he said, okay, I want you to fax, Paul, fax Newman Payton. I'd met him one time. He said, fax Newman Payton and say to him, yes, Paul Cain is a man of God, will have the word of God in his mouth for Kurt Vall time. And I said, no, God, I don't want to do that. <laughs> now, isn't that something? And God said, you better do what I told you. See, now, the Lord doesn't say, thus saith God unto thee, my son. One time he said, you're so stupid. That's what he told me. One time he said, hey, boy, you better pray or you're going to die. That's the truth. 150-something SWAT team police and helicopters. And God said, hey, boy, you better pray or you're going to die. And, man, I found out real quick, you can't preach something and not have to live it. We've been preaching a few months about binding and loosing the power of our... Yeah, and God said, yeah, we'll see if you're hot air or you believe this. And so we found out, hey, it works. But anyway, facts Newman Payton tell him, yes, Paul came as a man of God to have the word of God in his mouth for Kurt Valtime. Kurt Valtime at that time, had, at one time, had been president of Austria, and he was uh, uh, president of the United Nations. So I said, I don't want to do it, and God said, do it now. So I went ahead and did it. What I didn't know was just a few seconds prior to that, Newman Payton had faxed Paul Kane to come to Vienna, Austria and have a set-down dinner with Kurt Valtime and his wife, Elizabeth. And so Newman Payton had just bowed his head. He sent Paul the fax, and then he bowed his head on his desk and said, Oh, God, was that really you? Zzzz, out of his fax machine came the word, Yes, Paul Kane is a man of God. Have the word of God in his mouth for Kurt Valtime. And see, all of that is documented because the fax has the day and the hour and the second and all that. Well, wasn't that good? I like that. You say, well, what good does that do? Well, it got Paul Cain into see Saddam Hussein, and uh, that was pretty good, wasn't it? I think so. Uh, I think so. Well, good. When a whole bunch of Muslims get saved, you'll think so too. So That's good. God's going to save a bunch of Muslims, you know. Jesus has them on his heart, and he's appearing to them and uh, really doing some wonderful things. See, they're going to find out that God's good. They pray five times a day, never seen a prayer answered yet. So the Lord's going to turn and start showing answered prayer, and they're going to come to God in droves, droves like millions. Well, I've enjoyed being here. Have you had fun? It's been a good time with you guys. Now, let me tell, I'll talk to you a little bit more about the prophetic. Uh, God wants you to prophesy. He says in the Bible, in the New Testament, he said, earnestly covet to prophesy. Does that sound like it strongly suggests that he wants you to pursue prophetic? Desire to prophesy. Moses said, I would to God all of God's people were prophets. That's what Moses said. And then Paul the Apostle says, earnestly covet to prophesy. And I looked up the word earnestly covet. And it means get passionately stirred up to. In our terms, in street terms, it would be get the hots to prophesy. Get turned on to prophesy. Get worked up to prophesy. Well, I don't know if I want. Well, if you don't want to do it, somebody else will do it. You believe that? Well, I don't want to. Pro well, God wants you to prophesy. He wants to encourage people. Now, I'll tell you where prophecy ought to work. 
Prophecy ought to work out in the streets. Oh, I don't believe that. Well, don't tell Jesus about it in John 4. Remember that? John 4. You remember the story? Disciples were hungry. Stomachs were gnarling. And so they said, let's go into town. Stop by and get something to eat. And Jesus sat at a well and said, I'll just wait here. You remember that? And here comes a woman from Samaria. And Jesus just enters into a little dialogue and says, would you give me a drink? And she gets into a religious argument. You remember that? What does she say? You're a Jew. I'm a Samaritan. You sit in that mountain. We sit over here. Give me a drink. And then you know what Jesus does? He begins to operate in the prophetic. He says to the woman, Go call your husband. You remember it? And the woman says, I do not have a husband. And Jesus really said, You have answered that correctly. You've had five, and the guy you're shacked up with now is not your husband. And she goes, oh, 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 Sir, I perceive you are a prophet. And she ran into the town, and here's what she said. She said when she got into town, Come, see a man who told me all that I ever did. She's either exaggerating a lot of that, or John didn't write all the story. And John tells us he didn't write all the story. If all that he said and did were composed, the heavens couldn't contain the scrolls. You remember? I'm going to tell you, did it work out in an evangelistic way? It says the people came out and believed. And it, it, this really works. I like how the prophetic does. One time we went, went off in some place to eat, and we sat down there, and we were trying to, t trying to uh, uh, the lady came to take her order, and we was in another town, and so I'm sitting there, and a woman comes up, and I'm trying to order all the catfish you can eat for whatever it was. And so I, I, I tried to say to her, I would like to have the special here, and out of my mouth came, and I, I can't remember the names exactly, but I think it was Jim and Cindy. I said, I want to tell you, Jim and Cindy shall be delivered. Wham! She hits the floor and glasses, and she's crying. What I didn't know was just a few days or hours before her, her relatives, who was named Jim and Cindy, had been arrested on a drug charge and put into jail. And see, so here comes somebody by trying to order all the catfish you can eat and encourages her, yes. I was coming out of some coliseum one time. They was carrying me home. And I, I had my arm laying out of the van. A woman comes running up, grabs me by the arm and says, Oh, pray for me that my husband will come home. I said, don't worry, honey. In six weeks, he'll be home totally saved and full of the Holy Ghost. What I didn't know was he had, been aban he had abandoned her six years prior to that and was living in a Caribbean island. But guess what happened? Came home saved, full of the Holy Ghost. One woman, one woman walked up to me and she walked up to me and she had another uh, son with her. And she said, we're coming, standing in for this boy's brother. He's been a heroin addict for 22 years. And out of my mouth came these words. How long was it, Carolyn? How, how long did I say it? I said, I, here's what I said. I said, within six weeks from today, he'll be totally delivered. Now, I'll tell you something. When you start putting dates and moments, uh, you better have hit it right or you better be ready to apologize instead of backing up and saying, well, you know, uh, he must have canceled out. Well, anyway, guess what happened? Six weeks to the day to a boy named Mark, a man named Mark who had been a heroin addict for 22 years, totally delivered by the power of Jesus Christ. He told me himself, his mother told me, and a pastor where he joined the church told me. Isn't that something? See, now that's how God can do. Now, listen, isn't that amazing? I like the prophetic. We, we've been into a bunch of stuff. You could, we prophesied the day and the hour the Desert Storm War would start six months before it started. And it's on television footage. We told about Saddam Hussein marching out of Baghdad, turning back, shooting towards Israel, setting all the oil wells on fire and all that kind of stuff. But all of these are, it's, it's I don't know, but it's exciting. We get to travel a lot of times uh, without an airplane. Don't you like that? Get up and get to, yeah, you say, I don't believe in that spiritualism. Well, they stole it from us. It's ours. I'm tired of people saying, well, you know, we can't have these out-of-body experiences. Well, you better look and don't tell Philip and all them guys that. Spirit caught him away. You remember that? The hand of the Lord was upon me and took me out in the spirit. You remember that? And so it's kind of fun. This is happening. We've been sailing. Well, anyway. It's fun. I'm tired of him stealing our rainbow. Well, don't say rainbow. Hey! 
That's, yeah, aren't you sick of the new age stealing everything? That's re- well, you know, uh, oh, we believe in spirit guides. Listen, I have the spirit guide. He'll guide me into all truth. He'll take my dumb, dull mind and illuminate it and make it luminous with the Word of God. That's what the Holy Ghost will guide you in. Okay. Isn't that good? Come here, you Marine. Come here. I've met him at dinner. I'm going to tell you God's fixing to make you militant and mean in the Holy Ghost. Militant and mean. God says to tell you your training in the past is for this time that you're in now. I'm telling you God's about to do something with this perverted militia mess. God's, it's perverted and all that junk, but God is fixing to raise him some militant guys. I'm here to tell you it is the Lord that teaches our hands to war so that a bow of steel is broken by our arm. And God is going to do this for you. You want this? You can have it, man. And he said, oh, don't you know I'm just a youth pastor? That's the ones that's going to get bold. We wussed out on it. We wussed out on it, so God will just raise him a militant army out of young people. They'll come in looking for a devil to stomp. Yeah, they will. I've already seen them, man. Well, good. You want this? Hold your hands up. God said, I'm going to set his hands on fire. God said he'll do that for you. You want that? Lord, smack Richard. Smack him. Smack him. Smack him. Smack him. Smack him. Lord, smack him. Yeah, he said, I'd hold, my, hold your microphone for you. Uh, you know what, we you know, get these hands a-going, it's pretty good. Well, good, I'm, I'm here to tell you, God is going to raise a militant army. If you don't like to fight, get out of the New Testament church. I'm telling you, we're about to see the Lord as a man of war. Now, we're not going to be fighting the Baptists and Methodists. We're going to come against a religious spirit, a political spirit. We're, we're, I'm telling you, this well now... We're going to get after Jude 3. Ungodly men have crept in unawares and they've perverted the grace of God, turning it into a license for immorality. I'm telling you, God don't put up with near as much as we think He does. Y'all understand that? One of the end time struggles will be contending for the faith which was once delivered to the saints. When Jesus said, well, when I come back, shall I find faith? He meant it. We're going to have to fight for the faith which was once delivered. Contend, earnestly contend. Now, what, we're going to have to fight these old religious spirits. Well, if I don't trouble them, they won't trouble me. Oh, listen. We need to just harass them. We ought to be on a search and destroy mission. You understand that? Really, we should be a little more militant towards this thing. Well, couldn't we just get along? No, we can't. Can't just get along. You believe that? Can't get along. I see you ministering to, to Eskimos. Come here, woman. To Eskimos. Come here. I see you ministering to Eskimos. Yeah. Yeah. You believe that? I'm talking about those Indians. You know, isn't that something? What do you think about that? Yes, that's yeah. right. God said he'll make you a warrior in this. A warrior. Yes, a warrior in this. Yes, 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 yes. Who are you? Who? I take it that's a definite yes. Yes, just get around. That's right. A militant, wonderful warfare deal. Don't you like that? To those... What? What is it, Patty? She's been waiting to go to Alaska. Going to Alaska. There's some Eskimos there. And she's going to go up there with power. Yeah, isn't that something? Don't you like that? Oh, her grandfather's a chief. This lady's here is telling me. Isn't that something? Well, I like that. It's pretty neat. God's up to something. You know, we talked about that Catholic stuff, and later on I found out that was good. But, you know, we really don't have to find out it's good. You understand? God will... Do what needs to be done about all that stuff. Well, let's see. I'm just looking around. Is that okay to look around a minute? Now, I want to talk to you uh, uh, about some, uh, a possibility of us being able to do what Jesus said, greater works than he did. It's going to take a real demonstration to, to even turn the wicked mindset of the people in America. One thing that's happened, we've had smorgasbord preaching. You understand that? We can just kind of take it, or is that uh, you know buffet lunch preaching? 
You understand that? Well, I can just, you know, I just take, I don't like squash, but I really love asparagus. And, you know, I don't like chicken, but I'm really fond of fish. You know what you're going to have to do? Take what God's serving. You believe that? You know what he's serving? You ain't going to like it. He's serving his son. He said, except you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no part in me. And they said, tough saying, and they walked away. Is that right? See, you remember I told you, if we hear the knock, Revelation 3.20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in, and I will sup with him, and he with me, and I will give him to sit with me on my Father's throne. And you know what? I looked up the word sup. I used to think it was a little finger sandwich supper. It means the main meal. And the main meal is Him. We consume Him. We consume Him. That's right. And then He begins to consume us. You don't think that's real, do you? That's how Paul lived his life. The life that I live, live I live by the faith of the Son of God that loved me and gave Himself for me. You remember that? It's not me that lives, but what? Yeah. Well, good. I, I'm, I see some... Uh, real potential for some guys in the back over here for for miracles and so uh do you want miracles i feel a real anointing for some guys for miracles back here in the back stand up those of you that really want miracles now if you don't want to operate in miracles don't stand up but if you want to operate in miracles if you want to operate in miracles god keeps hammering on that don't he i mean we can sit here and sit there but god just keeps hammering on it isn't that something now this is for miracles you got a ferry to catch, a boat to catch. You remember that? She said, I really want prayer. I got a boat to catch. That's right. Okay. You need a miracle. What happened to you? Fell off, Fell off the ladder. Oh, bless your heart. What did it do? Break it? I broke my ribs, broke my ribs, and fractured my cheekbone. Bless your heart. A football player came, and he had broke his arm that day, and they put it in a cast, and the Lord said, there's power here to heal. And the guy came forward and said, I believe the Lord's healed my arm. I said, what makes you think that? He said, the swelling went down. And before I could stop him, he went wham, wham, and started beating it over a wooden pulpit. And so I told him, I said, go back to the doctor, get him to x-ray it. And the, he brought back the x-rays the next night, totally healed. See, now God doesn't love that guy one bit more than he loves you. I want to quote a verse to you. It's Jeremiah 30, 17. God heals us of our wounds, saith the Lord. That's what he says. I'll heal thee of thy wounds, saith the Lord. And so uh, let's ask him to do that for you, okay? Amen. Ask him, say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, I ask that you'll heal me. I'll give you glory for it, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Yes, Lord, do this for him. Lord, heal him and make him well for your glory, Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. Take away the pain and make him well. Well, good. Isn't this good? Take this lady. It's yours. You can have that. She said, I feel... Wake up. I want this whole bunch to have it, okay? Okay, isn't that something? You believe in miracles? You believe Jesus still raises the dead? Do you believe that? Do you believe that? Do you believe that? Do you believe that? Have you ever thought about Bulgaria? Bulgaria is a place in the world. Have you ever thought about that? Years ago. Years ago. Back, yes. Years ago. See, God's tuning into what happened years ago. But I want you to know God raises the dead, and he's still on this Bulgaria deal. And so, uh, that's, can I touch your hands? Is that okay with you? I'll let you hold yeah. this now. It's going to be okay, you know. Yeah, he said it cost me for him holding that mic. Lord, thank you for touching this brother. Lord, release for him healing power and anointing. Lord, do the things that you purpose for him in Jesus' name. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Lord, touch him. Yeah. Hey, Kay. You all right? Is it okay? It's okay, isn't it? Well, he said you're going to get hot in the anointing, but it's going to be good. Kind of shocked her on the hands, tip of her fingers, but it's okay. You know him, you know him, it's going to be okay, you know. Yeah, yeah. I know, I know it's going to be okay. So you can have that. So, so I, want the, I want the miracle working power of God operating in my life. You want that? You want that? Yeah, you're radical enough to have it. You know, here. See, now, freely we receive and freely we give. We've got documentation of people being healed all over the country. And the Lord said, I'll do more of it if you won't take the credit. We just get to show up and watch it happen. Isn't that something? Really, we have nothing to do with it. 
Not a thing other than uh, let people have an opportunity for Jesus to show himself. It, you understand that? Listen, if I don't know of a faith healer, I don't, I don't believe there's any such thing as a faith healer. There's one healer and his name's Jesus. It's not Oral Roberts, it's not Benny Hinn. Jesus. Y'all understand that? And people say, oh, if I could just get to so and so. Get to Jesus. And he'll use us if we'll stay out of the way. You believe that, this old big boy right here? Come here just a second. You fix it and get a whacking. Uh, that, that means an anointing. You know, a whacking. A whacking. Well, then we'll get away from all this stuff. Eh, he looks like a, a whacker, doesn't he? You want miracles, don't you? You betcha. You believe God's promised that you can operate in them? Yes. I do too. So Lord, touch me. <laughs> Lord, touch me. That's right. Give him anointing for this. Radical anointing. Radical anointing. I saw him like in a rodeo. He's big for a rodeo guy, unless you're the bull. You know. Uh, I saw him like in the rodeo. I'm telling you. Yeah, Lord, so touch him and anoint him for these days in Jesus' name. Yes, yes, yes. Here, you can have this, man. Just hang on. Just... Oh, he said, man, there really is something to this. Kind of shocked him a little bit because he was wondering, well, I bet that guy pushes him down. Yeah, that's what. You've heard that kind of stuff, haven't you? Look, that bum equipment. I don't believe that. I believe that's blessed under the master's equipment. Bum. Do you see that? Blessed under the master. You believe that? Yeah. Oh, I'm just, I'm threatening, I'm threatening to shoot you. You believe that? You ready? Dun, 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 dun. No, it's okay. You ready? Y'all ready? Pow! This is okay. Here, it's, it's a derringer. Pow, pow! Just, this, well, we, ho! Okay. You okay? Oh, you'll be drunk. The conference is about over. Just take a snort. Yeah. Come, come here. These miracles are for you. Come here. Come here. They're so, it's okay. You believe that? Oh, yeah. I believe so. Yeah. 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 I saw the Lord rekindling the stove. I saw him coming and rekindling a stove like a, a blacksmith smelter and stirring it up and so I believe the wind of the God will blow on it okay I believe the wind of God will blow on it I saw like a black a, yeah I saw like a blacksmith's furnace and the Lord stirring around in it it's really something and new fire is going to come upon some stuff you believe that Amen. I do too say Lord touch me Lord touch me Lord do that for him touch him Lord touch him Lord touch him Lord touch him Lord yes Lord New fire, new fire, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> new fire for him. Yeah, got a little new fire, isn't it? Well, good. Let's see if there's anybody. Well, we don't want to mess around too long. Y'all don't want to mess around long. Anybody want to mess around? You still stiff? Yeah, he's still. He's holding the girl, so he can't get too stiff. He's stiff, Mr. Rogers. Otis is fun. I like Otis a lot. But let's see who else. Otis just gets drunk. Come here, this lady right here. Come here, yeah. You okay? Tell them how it feels. How's it feel? Can I hear that? Hello. Whoa! Really okay. She likes this, and the Lord likes it. She likes it. Amen. Yeah. Amen. This will happen to you if you're not careful. That's right. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Oldest over here, directed traffic. Oh, yeah. Come on through. Yeah. No, it's okay. Hey, you like this? Let's take a little trip. Come over here. We'll take about three steps, and you'll make it one, uno, dosi. That's three. <sighs> She's a little shook up. <laughs> She's about to get down there with the chief's, chief's daughter or somebody. Here, Lord, just smack her a good one. This, the whole section, okay. The whole section by the bleachers, y'all stand up. I, I don't want you to fall off of there. Hey, you better step down because... Because really sometimes this thing goes sailing over there and people fall off of balconies and 
bounce a time or two, but they get them on the second dribble. Do you believe that? We've seen this happen. That's right. Do y'all want this? Y'all want this? They're good. He said, oh, I do. Here, y'all lift your hands. We just ask the Lord to come touch you. Lord, we ask that you'd come and touch those people with your power. Lord, we ask that you would demonstrate an anointing upon their lives. And Lord, we ask that you would equip them and touch them for these days. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Here, you want this? You can have it. Lord, I want to thank you for this. In Jesus' name, touch those people for your glory. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, she tried to jump it. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. You still drunk? <laughs> I take that to be yes. It'll get a lot worse. Take this. Take that. Ooh, ooh, just a punk. Yeah, nice catch. But you can't hardly hurt a drunk. Put that neck back and joint. Yeah. Here, the lady in the red. You want this? You want this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You okay? She's going to be fine. Hey, can you take about seven steps this way, this lady? And you can come with her, the one that's holding her. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, that's good. Here. It's, she's touched in the tummy, but it's going to be okay. That's, you believe that? Yes. Uh, oh, she said these eight. Well, it's fun. Okay. You guys want to help us in this? Come here. Yeah. You're going to get prophetic anointing with all this other stuff. With all this other stuff, you get prophetic anointing. You believe that? Yes. Please. I do too. I do too. He's going to get some prophetic stuff. You know, he's really going to need that too where they're going. Isn't that something? Can I butt you in the head? I won't hurt you. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Just a thud. So, well, a headbutt. Hey, isn't this something? Can I take a walk with you? I won't hurt you. I, I wouldn't hurt her. Can I walk with her just a moment? That's going to be okay in it. And you're from Canada? That's right. What part of Canada? British Columbia. That We're going there in the morning, uh, some, well, tomorrow sometime. We're going to Chilliwack. I guess that's British Columbia. We went to Victoria a few weeks ago. Boy, that was nice. Looks like England, doesn't it? Yeah. It feels like England. Y'all been there? It, I like it. There. I preached in a church there. Had a good time. Enjoyed. Saw a bunch of eagles and stuff. Uh, let's take a little walk. Is that okay? Sure. That's good. That's really good. First thing the Lord is saying, He said to tell you, He's a God that heals back trouble. He heals back trouble. He's a God that heals back trouble. And so I want you to know that. And He's a God that puts every bit of the chemistry in perfect balance. Isn't that something? Don't you like these walks? Amen. They're really good. They're, they're good. I know, I know it. I know they're really good. We're taking another little... We're taking a turn for the best now. Isn't that something? <sighs> I'm here to tell you the Lord loves you a whole bunch. I mean a whole bunch. He's precious to you. And He says to tell you He's going to start whispering in your ear. You're going to hear mighty things that He shares with you. Thank you. Because you thought, oh God, will you really speak to me? And he said, I really will. And, and it's really good. He really loves you. Isn't this fun? Got some good days in front of you. Good days in front of you. Isn't this fun? Amen. Great. Yeah, it is good. Isn't that good? Reckon he, reckon he ought to come take a little stroll with us. You want him to come take yeah. a little? Come on and take a little stroll with us. He's kind of a no-nonsense kind of guy, you know. He's uh, been known, in, known for that. Can we take a little walk? Amen. Yeah. 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 He loves integrity. The Lord loves integrity. And that's one thing you've said. I want to walk honest, Scott. I said, isn't that something? Remember those little talks? Isn't that something? God's really good. Isn't he good? Amen. Can I give you a hug? I want to give you a hug. Amen. Will you hold this mic for him? Would you do that? I just want to hug you. Thank you.
saying, oh God, I can't do that. I can't do that. God can. And that's, you're going to find that out. He's going to put some things in your hands to do and he'll do it for you because you'll give him glory for it, okay? I believe that. And he loves the integrity in your heart. He really loves that. I'm telling you, he loves that. That's precious to him. And I'm here to tell you, I've got some good days. Good days. Good days in front of you. Isn't that something? That's good. Well, I don't want to talk too much about finances, but I saw some money coming your way. So that's better than saying I saw some money going away. But, uh, but I saw some money. So don't worry about it. I saw some money coming your way. That's pretty good, isn't it? One time I told a man, they owe you a raise. And it's supposed to be back pay also. And sure enough, he went to the office and said, you owe me a raise. And they said, well, we don't think so. And then they said, yes, we do. And we owe you back pay. So he got several hundred dollars because he believed the prophet. Second Chronicles 20, 20. Trust in the Lord. So shall you be established. Believe his prophets. So shall you what? Prosper. Now, if you don't like prosperity, boy, you in the wrong camp. God glorifies in prospering his people. He loves it. Oh, I know. How many of you want that? How many, how many of you just want a, a raw anointing to do the work of Jesus and do all that? Well, let's stand up and ask the Holy Ghost to come do what only He does. Anoint. I'm going to get up here where I can see you a little better when you all stand up. Now, one thing, you, you don't have to beg the Holy Ghost, you know. He's more eager to make Jesus real than you are to allow Him to be made real. You believe that? So I want you just to lift your hands and let's ask the Holy Spirit to come. Just ask the Holy Spirit to come. Go ahead and ask Him. Father, I want to thank You that Your Holy Spirit's going to come into this room in manifested presence. Lord, You're going to feed Your hungry people. You're going to minister to Your people. And we thank You for this. We thank You, Lord, for the plans and purposes of God for this Seattle area and coastline area. We thank You for a healing mantle that's released upon this region of the country, Lord Jesus. I want to thank you for this, Lord Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. So Holy Spirit, you're welcome to come in this room. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. We welcome you. We will not resist you. We will not quench you. Yes. Just invite him. Say, Holy Spirit, come. Invite him to come. He's really here. He's yeah, that's right. Holy Spirit, you're welcome to come any way you want to come. We'd have no preconceived ideas. We're not making any supposition on you and telling you you've got to do it a certain way. You just do it any way you want to. You come any way you want to. Any way you want to. Yeah. 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 Yes. That's right. Lord spoke to me, said, I'm going to come for a moment with a spirit of travail. Not a bad one, but a good one. A birthing. So, Lord, I release this. A spirit of travail. 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 A spirit of travail on the people in Jesus' name. A crying out before the throne. A wailing out. You said when Zion travails, she'll deliver. Lord, we travail. Let your spirit of travail come. Yes. Let your spirit of travail come. Mm. Yes. 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 <laughs> yeah. That's right. Travail is that movement before birth. That manifestation before birth. Yeah. He's doing that, you know. Travailing is not just a woman's job. Watch this. Here. Travail! Travail! That's right. It's not just a woman's job. 
You believe that? You believe that? Yes! Yes. You believe that? Do you believe that? You believe that? Travail! It's like having a baby, you know. Yes. 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 It's like having a baby, you know. You know. You believe that? She's talking about that baby. You believe that? I do too. I do too. Yes, sir. Do you want this? Pow! Yes. Yeah, let him preach. God said he's going to put signs on wonders to preach. You say, oh, not me. Yeah, yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Huh? This, this lady? Look at her. She like travailing. She doesn't like travailing, but she's going to do it. Tell them about travailing. 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 Yes. Yes. Yeah. Come here, bubbles. 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 Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Blowing bubbles, wasn't you? Oh, wasn't that good? Bubbles is a sign of jubilation, isn't it? Time of celebration, isn't it? You believe that? Yes, I do. Well, the Lord said He's just going to shake you up like champagne and release the bubbles. Yes, right. That's right. That's right. That's right. And He said, I'm going to blow the lid off, okay? Yeah, I'm ready. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, she said, I am so ready. Yeah. Y'all know this woman? Bubbles, bubbles, that's what I'm calling because she's blowing them bubbles. Oh, it's going to be Holy Ghost bubbles too. You believe that? Yeah. Yes, here. Oh. Yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. She's wondering, is this for me? Yes, it is. It really is for you. It really is for you. You believe that? That's right. Can I touch your forehead? Is that all right? He said, no more worry, no more worry, no more worry. That thing is gone, gone, gone. No more apprehension and worry. No more of that. So, yeah. That's good, isn't it? That's good. That's good. You okay? Yeah, you okay? That's right. Believe Jesus can grow out legs? You believe that? I do too. She said, yeah, I do. I do too. I believe when we get integrity to get it, to carry it, there won't be one problem with that kind of stuff. But I want you to know that. I want you to know that. I got caught up to heaven. I saw a warehouse full of arms and legs and eyes. And I bet you one of them is yours. I bet you one of them is yours. I asked Jesus, I said, what is this? He said, it's parts that people wouldn't claim. That's what he said. A warehouse. It looked like mannequin parts. Legs and arms. And, and, but they were real, not stuffed. Your eyes. She's not worried about her legs. She said, I, I want my eyes healed. So Lord Jesus, heal this woman's eyes. I bind a blinding spirit in the name of the Lord Jesus. I command her eyes to be open in Jesus' name. Lord Jesus, come and manifest your glory. Open her eyes. I bind stigmatism and bind all of those things, glaucoma and cataract. I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. Lord, heal every blood vessel in those eyes and focus everything, Lord. We give you glory for it. Cause her eyes to be perfect for your glory, Jesus. So a per totally blind woman in Bulgaria healed by the power of Jesus. Totally blind, 70-something years old, and the Lord Jesus healed her. He doesn't love that woman one bit more than he loves this woman. You believe that? Well, Otis is here. Okay, let's see. What do you what do y'all want to do? Let's just mess around with some people, okay? Look at this usher. Who really here? The Lord really wants to release some anointing on people for evangelism. That's what this whole thing's about. You believe that? You believe that? God is wanting to release an anointing for evangelism. I'm talking about that. I mean, a gift of Holy Spirit-inspired evangelism. 
You want that? Hey, Chris, you want that? You want that? Come over here. Bring, bring her with you. Come on. I'm talking about now. You can, you can grab this too. You can grab it. What, you're at reckon we ought to push the seats back or what do you think? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, let's do it with it. All right, let's do this with some, uh, s some semblance of order since there's so many people here. Can we start picking up the chairs, stack the pink ones about, uh, about eight high, and the green ones we can put over uh, alongside. Just give some help, those of you who can help at all. And what we want to do is put toes right on these lines. These are lines right here. They're just wonderful. This is a gymnasium. We've got some lines right here. And there's this another line back there. And then I'm going to have some a ministry team come up real quickly and help me. Ministry team, can we have some help lining people up? Ministry team, can we have some help? If you have a tag on that says your ministry team, you know that this is the time that you help. This is the time you help. You don't get in line. You help if you're on ministry team. This is your time to help. <laughs> get everybody lined up. Yes, yes. Okay, ministry team, we need another line behind this second one. Okay, please, ministry team, go to the third line back and start helping. All right, you shouldn't be in line. If you've got a ministry team tag on, you shouldn't be in line. You should be helping get that third line. Okay, just watch these guys that are with their hands raised just right there. Thank you very much. Oh, you're wonderful. Okay, the fourth line back, ministry team, can I have some help just making that fourth line back so that we're nice and straight? And then we're going to have to go with the fifth line, I can tell. Our ministry team, we really need your help, okay? Please, please help with lining people up before you ever pray. You do not pray until you get, we get everybody lined up, please. I know we get excited at this time, but we, this is the only semblance of order we usually have around here is lining people up. <laughs> Toes, on Toes on the line. Okay, just work real hard, ministry team, to get those lines up. They're going to have to go with a fifth line in the back, push the chairs out of the way. That'll be good. We're just going to, I think there's probably going to come a anointing where we can just come down through your wham, 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 you know. But we'll have, just have, kind of have to see. We may not even, you know, uh, they may just start falling like they are, you know. So I need a lot of catchers. Lot so my ministry people need to be the catchers right now. All right. Ministry team, what we want you to do is, is Bobby's going to start praying for people up here in this front row. We need for you to come up and start being catchers, okay? We need about a dozen of you to come up ministry team if you got a ministry team tag up we're gonna call you on on you to be catchers male and female catchers okay male and female catchers we know about that we're gonna start over here on this side over on this side ministry team okay go ahead bobby you want to say something first you want to say something first or uh, we'll just say a little bit and out I, I, I want you to listen now Falling is not the name of the game. You, you understand that? You know, I'm not against that. We've seen untold numbers of people fall over. That's, I'm not against that. Uh, and certainly that happens. But that's not the ultimate goal. If that was the ultimate goal, God would just send us in here at the Billy Club. You know? You understand that? We'd have just knocked hell out of everybody. You understand that? If knocking you down was the ultimate goal of God. You understand that? Now... God does that. I can show you multiple scriptures where people fall. 
And so, but I'm trying to get people out of the mindset of thinking they've got to fall. All we have to do is respond to the Holy Ghost, no matter what He wants to do. We've seen people cry, we've seen people laugh, we've seen people run, we've seen people roll. It's not what you do, it's what the Holy Spirit's doing to you. It's your response to Him. So that's what I want you to do. And I want you to be assured of this. The Holy Ghost will honor the Lord Jesus. He will exalt the Lamb of God. He will make us like the Master. So we don't have any fear about that. He is really on a mission to equip us to be like the Son of God. Well, it's good. Uh, is Chris, come here and stand right here by your wife just a moment. I know you're supposed to be catching, but uh, when I looked out there, the Lord said this uh, birthing of this evangelistic deal was what you've been praying for and asking for. And he said, I'm going to release that gift of evangelism, Holy Ghost inspired evangelism. And uh, he said that it's going to be uh, very easy for you to win souls. It's going to be very easy for you to win souls. It'll be like this. They'll run up to you and say, what must I do? You know, and uh, you, won't, you won't have to run them down. They're going to be running you down, chasing you down, saying, I, I want to hear this good news. And so uh, I see a, a, not only an anointing for soul winning on you, but a training for others to be led into soul winning. Winning people to the Lord Jesus. Not a drudgery, not one of those, oh, i got to do it. It's I get to do it. And so, but uh, this thing really is for you guys. And uh, uh, it's going to be a wonderful thing. Grab her by the hand. Y'all can have this. <laughs> yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I release in Jesus' name a wonderful gifting for gathering. A gifting for gathering in Jesus' name. Uh, release that sickle anointing upon them to thrust it in and win the harvest. In Jesus' name. More, 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 more of that. More of that. More of that. Now, I know they're supposed to be catching, but they're caught right now. They're just caught. They're caught. Okay. Now, okay, I see you, Eloise. Listen, that thing going to whack you. You're going to, I tell you, that's good. Yeah. 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 Not now, Koto. Yeah. Not now, Koto. Yeah. 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 Not now, Koto. Yeah. 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 Oh, you're gonna, you're gonna have a great time. Come over here, just a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. Isn't that something? Yes. This is good. You're gonna be contagious. People are gonna get around you, and you're gonna be contagious with the Holy Ghost. Contagious with the joy. Contagious with this drunkenness. You believe that? I do too. I do too. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I get this Oriental. Yeah. But it's gonna be okay. You believe that? Yeah, more drunker than she's been, Lord. Drunker, drunker than she's been. Drunker than she's been. <laughs> drunker than ever. I've been wanting to get a hold of you. Drunker than ever. Drunker than ever. Yeah. Drunker than ever. Yeah. Drunker than ever. Drunker than ever. Drunker than ever. Drunker than ever. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> she said, whoa, oh, it. oh yes, just drunker than ever. Oh, just, ju just rip roaring, lampshade spinning drunk. She's a sharpshooter. Oh, that was really something. I have to tell you, I'm a, I'm a sharpshooter too, boy. Really. That's right. We better start at the far end. Okay. I'll tell you what we could do, and after we pray for a few, well, the ministry team's released to pray for them, the ones that you release, okay? But I want you to know something. You can receive God's powers here. You believe that? You believe that? Yeah, that's good. Now, I mean it, old mili militant man here. That's good. Let's just kind of mess with him, okay? Okay. Hey, the Lord said to tell you it's going to get a lot better. This guy, you got a kind of a brown-looking shirt on, got rivers, river of life. God says to tell you it's fixing to get a lot better. A lot better. A lot better. I want you to know that. The Lord says to tell you it's going to get a lot better. A lot better. I want you to get that deep down in you. It's going to get a lot better. A lot better. A lot. That's right. Well, let's see. You okay? Lord loves you a bunch. You know that. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He said, let go of me. He's going to get you. Lord's going to, Lord's going to give you the desires of your heart. That's what he's here to tell you. 
He said, I'll give you the desires of your heart. He said, you've won my heart. You've won my heart. And so he's going to give you the desires of your heart. Isn't that something? You want, you want prophetic stuff? You can get it. That's what you've been wanting. She said, oh, could I? Yeah. Yeah. She said, prophetic. I can't even spell it. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Hold this for us. Uh, you can have this. Yeah. You're going to get dreams, prophetic dreams. And, and, and stuff like that. Stuff like that. Hey, yeah, stuff. Uh, you, you, hear, you know that all, already, don't you? You know that already. The desires of your heart. You say, oh, well, really? Yeah, well, because see, his desire become your desire. Yeah, she said, oh, no. Yeah, that's just the plan of God. And it'll be for them. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You okay? Yes. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Remember, the, the Lord was messing with him. Don't you like to get messed with? Say, take it, darling. Take it, darling. Tell him. You, have, you heard, have you heard Benny Hinn say, take it, darling? Yeah. Ah, well said. He says, take it, darling. Yeah. 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 That's right. Yeah, that's right. You remember us messing with you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, yeah. Let's start Whoa, don't, don't break the camera. Ha, ha. Yeah. But it don't stand by, won't we? You okay? We want to encourage stand you to just See worship that? the Lord now. What's your name? Just Carol. worship the Lord, okay? Carol. Musicians are going to okay. sing some very familiar yeah. songs to you. Just come into the presence of the Lord and worship Him. Yes. <laughs> oh, she said I'm Yeah. And we could use some more of the ministry team to help Bobby for just a little while. Just a few minutes while the oh. prophetic begins to he move here. So we could use a few more of the ministry team people. If you're a ministry team person, will you please look at me? We need you up here, okay? We need several of you up here, okay? Just help. Okay, not all of you. That's okay. Right about there. That's okay. Okay, that's okay. That's enough. Three, four of you. Okay. Ha, ha, ha. 